Gala is a charitable event which is intended to demonstrate to polite society how presentable and well-mannered the touch can be. It's this kind of charity which is now considered politically incorrect. Initially, the gala is to kind of try and integrate the touched into the London social life. There's not a lot understood about the touched, so I think there's a lot of fear and ignorance um, towards people who are touched. The gala is to try and give a feeling back to society that um, whatever they may have seen or whatever the papers may be saying, actually, these people are okay. Of course, all your turns will be used to minimal effect. The mission is to amuse. You'll also be wearing these, so people can comfortably identify you. As touched people, some of our powers aren't visible. Harriet's definitely not happy about having to wear the ribbons. It's actually quite dark. All the women just want to be normal and want to be at a party and wear a pretty dress and be considered normal parts of society and society insists on compartmentalizing them and separating them. I don't think they think too much of it. It's just another way of othering us. They turn from people into amusements. They're there to be funny now and not to be scary. You can wonder at them. Uh, do we smile or <gasps> perhaps? Don't be an ass, Carl. There's a lot of green screen in the making of Primrose. There's also a platform that I have to stand on quite a lot of the time that actually brings me up to Primrose height. But we also have a Primrose doll, which is my exact proportions, but Primrose size. It's strange enough just to see myself, like in a picture, but then to see a model of myself, but double, is, is quite scary. So to achieve the Primrose effect, we've got a uh, whole bag of different tricks. When she's getting photographed at the party, we actually used two cameras simultaneously, where we had one camera as a master camera showing she's standing against a staircase and there are these spectators who are taking a photo with her. And then we have another camera on Primrose who is still standing there in front of them, but she's at her normal height. But the second camera is half the distance closer to her and half the height. So we have her on green screen, and then with our video mixing team, in real time, they're compositing it so that the director and the DOP and all of us can watch on the monitors, seeing Primrose in real time looking like a giant from camera one's point of view. I've got to hand it to Anna. She's amazing dealing with visual effects and the process that we put her through. The Bidlow Estate is a pretty fabulous place in its own right. What was really nice about using West Wickham, which is where that one was, was that the lovely staircase, it was perfect for Primrose and having the photographs taken and everything, it was just spot on. The interiors of this place are sort of legendary in architectural history and then the sets were beautiful, the flowers, the food. I mean, it's the heartbreaking thing is, you know, if you actually tried to eat any of this stuff, you'd be poisoned, but it looked beautiful. The house lent itself to some beautiful autumnal colours of flowers, which um, we spiralled around the marble columns and had climbing up the stairway. We just went to town, Tina and myself. It just begs to be dressed, really. All of the people that went to the gala basically had people at home that would help curl their hair. But the girls from the orphanage were styled pretty much how they are on an everyday look. You know, they kind of all help each other out with their hair and things. We worked that out early on. We had a lot of the costumes made for the Bidlow house because I wanted the palette to be so precise. The class system was rife then in Victorian times. The best way to illustrate it in some ways is palette. We wanted pale and beautiful, not too sugary, but sort of lovely pale pistachios and peach and just this lightness and this beauty. And then into that, we bring the touched, who look a bit drab by comparison, except for penance, who we wanted to make look rather pretty, but actually rather dated. So her silhouette, it's not really of the time. It's something that was obviously handed down to her, but she still looks gorgeous. Did you have something you wanted? Uh, uh, there, there are some paintings thought that From you From when be... I said how I like paintings. Paintings, yes. You... 
Oggy's most excited to see Penance at the gala because not only was he very taken with her at the opera, but in locking eyes with her at the very moment that he realized he was touched, she too witnessed who he truly was. And she is very willing and open and prepared to hear his thoughts and listen in a way that other people won't listen to him. I am a monster. You know you're not though. It is Penance's job a lot of the time to help people understand what's happened to them is okay and it's actually can be a good thing. But the one thing that really surprises her is that they have a mutual passion in different ways. Like their turns come from a passion they have, like she loves inventing things and he loves, you know, birds and they really bond over that. So I think Penance gets to step out of the role of therapist and they actually share more than just like a little spark. It's like a murmuration. Um, a great horde of birds. They're all moving as one and then suddenly... <gasps> oh, I've seen that. Oh, I could watch for hours. They're both able to nerd out and not feel judged at all by the other one. And that's something that Oggy's never had before. And I think he feels seen for the first time by her. You were missed at the party. That would be a first. Lavinia's imperfect to her core, and not only is she got very politically incorrect ideas about difference and disability, she's also a snob and doesn't want her brother getting romantically involved with someone from a different class, never mind someone who is touched. You always assume the worst of everybody. They seldom disappoint. Lavinia's motivations, as always, are very complicated and it's meant to be complicated. We want you to wonder, is she trying to hurt the touched or is she trying to help them? How much does she know about what's going on? At the end of this episode, we learn that she knows some stuff we didn't think she knew. We want you to be asking all those questions about Lavinia. This is war.